Hey everybody, back with uh, part two of this crazy climber. If um, you didn't watch part one, I'll link to it here. But when I put this board set in the cabinet, we had some sound issues. So I will demonstrate that here real quick. We're already obviously powered on. And we will, what are we doing? Coining up. And I'm gonna press my start. Sounds not too bad, and then some static noise comes in. And you can hear the music playing in, in the background, um, but it's just like that static. And it wasn't there initially, so it's like it got enabled as soon as the first sounds got enabled or something. But the sound circuit is not, I guess it is somewhat complex, but almost all of the sounds come from this general instruments I think um, some of these were made by Yamaha but it's a AY38910 PSG programmable sound generator and um, there's three analog channels and there's like two sets of data IO but the data IO I think is really for like inputs and outputs coming from the uh, coming from the like um, joysticks and player inputs and stuff like that, I guess, um, or dip switches or whatever. So the sound generation is not impacted by the data I.O. on it, um, but there's three analog channels that come out, and it's on pins 38, 3, and 4. So I did get a new toy, which is this Rigel or Rigel, I don't know, DS1054Z. I didn't do a video on it, and I'm not going to because I already forgot when I the first day I got it. I, I learned some stuff, and then I already forgot what the hell I learned messing with it. But I bought it on eBay, and it was already, um, I guess, hacked. So it's a full 100 megahertz. Um, I didn't have to do anything. All the features are enabled. And then I also have my other scope, which is an analog scope, and that's digital. And... I'm still going to use my analog one because I just feel more comfortable with it right now. But this is a four channel one. I look forward to using it in the future. But I haven't really figured out all the features and all that crap. So anyway, let's come back and probe the outputs of this just to see if we can tell if it's the AY chip. And I did have to make a JAMA adapter with the video cable so I can you know, sp um, spread the boards out or lay them out. And honestly, I've already fixed the issue, but I'll take you there. It took me longer to make that damn adapter than it did to fix the issue, so be right back. All right, so let me coin up and we will probe. Actually, let me turn the volume down. <laughs> there we go. This is pin 38. And you can kind of see that right there. So you can see when the music is playing and then there's just like this constant noise right there. That's pin 38 the whole time. And then I'm going to pin, this is a pin 3. It's the same. I think that's the noise generation circuit of the actual AY, the, the PSG. And pin one, two, three, four of the AY. See, very similar. And now my game's over. Start it again. One, two, three, four. So the behavior is the same on all the analog outputs. So it's not like one output that's bad. You can see the music change our wavelength or waveform or whatever. And then it, the background noise is just there. So you can see this is, um, hopefully you can see this. This is actually the AY389. This is like um, whatever little diagram, functional diagram. 
you got your data address lines and these directional BC1, BC2, like it's the bus control, whether it's going in or out or whether it's probably reading or writing, I'm sure. These this A8 and A9 are special address lines that do something else. I was reading what it did. But anyway, that basically you know, writes data into this address latch decoder. And then based off of that, you know, you're doing different enables and changing channel amplitudes, you know, of the outputs. There's three different channels, channel one, two, and three. There's, you know, the digital to analog converters. There's three of them three mixers, three tone generations, and then that results in three analog channels. And then you see the noise generation here. So I'm thinking there's something wrong internally with the chip itself. Um, and not all three of them are wrong, but like it's not like this is something different. I don't know. I was just thinking it was the chip itself and it's socketed, so let's go ahead all right, and Alright, I got a new out. chip in. We credit it up. We have good sound here. No more static. And you see how it, there's no noise there. Like it comes down to like a nice little line about one volt maybe. Yeah. I'll pin number three. Same thing. And four. So I think that was our fix. And um, it was pretty easy. It only took me. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it only took me. Um, it took me longer actually to wire up the adapter than just swapping out that AY chip. So if you do have that static sound in in the future, I didn't have to replace the caps. I didn't even test them. Amp is fine. Um, just went straight to the AY chip, this PSG programmable sound generator, and uh, swapped that out. And it looks like that was our problem. So, all right, back to the cabinet. And I think the control panel is the next thing I want to fix. Okay, I got the board back in. And I have another problem, a new problem, which I don't understand. So let me see if you guys can see this. <clears throat> so I still have my credit switch in there. And hopefully you can see. My camera's messed up. But if I coin up or try to coin up, nothing is happening. So I wired, basically, I can put my light here. You can see that I wired um, a jumper to the ground, which is on the far left. And the coin is like second from the right is the coin one. So I can manually coin up if I, see if I can do this. Hmm. Oops, like this, and go to one of these. All right, I removed the coin, the coin counter, and actually the act of removing the coin counter board will um, actually put a coin in it. You can see I have credits five, but if I do it, just ground, that right there, a couple times, got credit six. So, um, so that's something happened to this counterboard right here that I'm gonna have to figure out what's wrong with it. There's no schematics that I'm aware of for this. So I'll just have to check these components like the diodes and something and check the voltage going to the board because there's 12 volts going to this board as well as five volts. Um, on a couple of these traces. There's 5 and 12 as well as ground. So yeah, this is ground right here. 
and one of these is 5 volts and one of them is 12 volts. So um, I'll figure it out. The other thing is, if I actually start a game, by just touching my little thing there. I know you can't barely see it, but... We don't have any... We don't have any voice. All we have is music. So our sound is not fully fixed yet, because I don't hear like, oh no! Should be an oh no there. And you don't hear the like, the little movements. If I hook up the control panel, which is sitting right there, you don't hear the choo -choo like whatever climbing sound so we got more work to do voltage just making sure voltage my, let's see there, that goes there we're just gonna come in here I got my ground already hooked up and one of I think this is five volts right there all right nope that's not five volts it is maybe this one All right, that's 12 volts right there, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, hold on, one, two, six from the left. Six from ground is 12 volts. And then two over, I think. Right there. One, two, three, four is five volts. I'm pretty sure that's right. Then you got five volts on the coin which is being is a pull up. That's the coin going to the PCB. So the voltage is getting there. Um, I don't know why the what happened to the my little coin PCB but I'm gonna work on that first and then the sound. All right, I got the coin counter board out of the game, and I did some labeling on it, and I've already troubleshot it, so I'm just going to review what I did with you guys. It's pretty basic. I mean, it's just, you know, 12 volts comes in for the coin counter, I believe, and then you have a 555 timer and a 7400. 7400, what, is a, a NAND gate, I think? Yeah, I think so. Um, so basically, if you can see here, this is your service switch. This is where the coin switch comes in. Coin switch comes over to a 100 ohm resistor that goes over to, um, that is tied to 5 volts. And, yeah, the 100, so it comes over here, boom. That is pulled high somehow. Why is that pulled high? Um, I can't remember now. This is our five volt trace. So it goes, here's pin 10, ground. This is um, not used, pin nine. Pin eight is coming from your coin switch where the actual switch is. Um, then you got, let's see, 9, 8, 7 is your 5 volts, 6 is not used, then 5 is your, um, 4, 3, 2, 1, yeah, 5 is your 12 volts, there's a little diode right there, and then 4 is not used, 3, I can't remember exactly, I think that's where your, your other, your coin counter comes in. Then you have your output going to your PCB board and you have your service switch. So like if your service switch comes in and then crosses this resistor, which goes up to the, up the um, 7400, and the same thing with your coin switch comes into this resistor, which goes up to the 7400 at different levels. And then different outputs, because let's see here, this is one, two, three is an output, I think. Eight and um, let's see, that's thirteen, twelve, and eleven. So the some these are your outputs, and there's this timer here, this five 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 timer. That's basically I think 
partially controlling like how many pulses or how quick it discharges or something like that. I'm not going into it. But what anyway, what I figured I would do is hook up, do a basic test. Where's my, um, here we go. I just grabbed a little, um, Molex connector. So I can hook up five volts. And then I'm going to use my power supply and I hook up ground and hook up onto my five volts, which is right there. And plug that into my power supply over here. Right there. Which is my five volt power supply. Turn that on. Not yet. Let's hook up. Let's hook up one more thing. Um, I'm gonna hook up another five volts. If I can. To my meter. like this. Now I'm going to turn on my power supply. Yeah, I haven't really used this too much. This uh, tri-output power supply. It's a BNK 1650. And so here's my meter. I'm looking at 5 volts. What's the ampage, amperage pull on it? Not much. But you can't adjust it. It's five. It's five volts straight away. So you can't adjust the five volts, and then it has a variable adjuster. But if we come to our five volt, as you can see right there, hopefully, we have four point nine volts. Four point nine seven three on that power supply. So what I want to check is if. I activate my coin switch. Maybe I put this over here. And I think this is a decent test. I don't know. If I, um, let's see, measure voltage going out. So that would be like pin two going to my coin switch uh, on the PCB. This is what is going to the PCB. And then I hit my coin switch. Does it go down? See, it went down. So I'm, I'm grounding my coin switch real quick. At least I thought it was. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, that one's not used. I'm hitting the wrong one. There you go. See how it went down? By me grounding the coin switch or grounding the service switch, which is right here. Isn't it? Or did I move this thing? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I'm thinking this, this board works. And um, I'm putting going to put it back in the cabinet. And I actually already know what the problem was. I didn't have actually my coin switch connector all the way connected. So it wasn't a problem with this at all. But I just figured I'd show you guys that I was troubleshooting it at least somewhat. Okay, so we got the PCB back at the bench. And we have a different sound issue that I didn't realize. So let's coin up. All right, coin up. And... What you should be hearing is his voice, and there also, also while he climbs up, there should be that little climbing noise, like right now, in the background. So the only thing we fixed was the music, um, which I think is directly, completely coming out from, you know, is just dependent on this um, AY, I think. I'm not sure about that. Let's look at the schematic. Right, so this is the schematic Crazy Climber upright, but... What's also common is I think 
the Crazy Kong. Um, this is Crazy Kong Falcon schematic. And this is actually much more legible schematic. And I believe it's exactly the same as Crazy Climber. So Crazy Kong and Crazy Climber, I believe, use the same same board. And it's much more legible. So here's your, eight, your um, PSG sound generator coming out. Pins 3, 4, and 38 are the outputs. We fixed that. That gets tied into the sound, li sound line via this 10K resistor. What also goes to that sound line is the output of this 3900, um, I think, op operation amplifier. And that is come that sound, which I believe we're missing, is coming from uh, a 4066, which I think, think is like a CMOS. Yeah, that's a um, CMOS switch some type of analog digital switch or something and that's switching between two inputs one that's coming from this op amp here which is being fed by whatever this is 4b and that 4b is just coming straight from the data lines data 0 through 7 from the CPU so the CPU is doing something you know driving whatever this is and I don't know that could be the climbing mechanism sound and this could be the voice um, up here so maybe 4b is the climbing sound coming straight from the data lines of the CPU and this is the voice that's coming from the data line outputs of these ROMs at um, ROM, it says ROMs 13 and 14 um, uh, but that's the crazy climber is that even right um, we'll look at the board, but I believe those those two ROMs feed into this 1H or something like that, and then that comes over here. So, anyway, I'm thinking it's in this section right here somewhere, like that op amp, that timer, or something going on here. But because we're missing all the sounds, I'm thinking it's this op amp, because we got this other sound here, which is the music coming from the... PSG and we're missing the other sounds and the only other you know input into that sound line is coming from this 3900 uh, the, the crazy this one on the crazy climber schematic is actually labeled uh, more correctly so it's ROMs 12 and 13 feed 5s and then 8n is a 174 5s is a 157 and that comes into 8p which is that 3900. So these are the, I think the speech ROMs or something. I, I'm not positive about that. We, we might experiment here. So here's your PSG. And then we have what? Um, 8S, which is your 4066. And I think they said 5S, which is a 157. So these are coming into the 157 as well as 8S. Um, so, oh, 8N, 5S and 8N first, and comes into that 174. So, yeah, it's here, 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 here. All of those chips plus this AY. That's kind of like the sound part. So, what I did is I piggybacked um, a op amp 3900 at 8P. Let's power on. We got that, and we will coin up. And now you can hear the climbing and the voice. So listen, listen for the climbing. Yep. So our problem is that 3900. So I'm gonna socket that, and then we'll experiment real quick just to verify which which line is voice and which line is uh, climbing. All right, I got my 8P uh, 3900, and I pulled out pin five, which I'll show you on the schematic in a second. So if you can see that, maybe. 
pulled out pin five. Let's see what kind of um, sound we get. Pin five, we don't get the climbing. Oh, and and we don't get the voice. <laughs> so I guess pin five is required for both. Huh, that's interesting. Why is that? Pin five is coming from here. So I guess you need both. Both of those, so like the data lines coming from the CPU coming into 8P, as well as the data lines coming from the um, sound of uh, character or the sound ROMs, I guess, getting mixed in via 8S to 8P. Interesting. All right. Well, there you go. I guess it's not going to matter. You need all of 8P working. I can't like separate out like the 8N and 5S, I guess is it? Yeah. All right, well anyway, I think I think it's gonna be fixed as soon as I put that back in. Yeah, Let's I see. just put the pin back in, 5P. Now you, can, now you hear the climbing noise and the voices. All right, so the sound is working. I think our credit switch is working. I figured that out. Um, we'll put this back in the game real quick. All right, have it in the game. Hit my little coin switch here. And we can see it's working. And that was just because, I don't know if you can see it, but I didn't have this all the way plugged in. It wasn't seated all the way in. That's all that was. Not a big deal. And if we hit... All right, if we hit player one. Yeah, now we have our sound. Uh-oh. interesting it doesn't it, it plays the little intro climbing noise even though the the climber is not climbing which is kind of interesting but all the all the sounds are working Go for it. <laughs> what a cool little game all right so next is uh, fixing the control panel um, Go for it. I need to clean the control panel and do some more cabinet work